join us by the fireside for our evening tales of true life's strange experiences with things that lie beyond the veil of the known and into the misty depths of the mysterious and unknown. A Beach House in Maine This experience is difficult for me to talk about because of how traumatic it was at the time. I almost feel too afraid to speak or write about it in case somehow it brings something back into my life from that horrible paranormal encounter. It was most definitely paranormal. There is no doubt in my mind. So it happened about seven years ago. I had recently, at that time, lost my husband and daughter in a car accident. I was not with them at the time of the accident, although I wish now I had been because of the suffering and heartache I had to go through after the police knocked on my door one evening to tell me there had been a fatal accident and my family were dead. Anyways, I tried to deal with the pain of it as best I could with the help of friends and other family members. And a month after the incident, I decided to rent a beach house in a remote part of Maine, right on the wild Atlantic coast, and just to be alone and work. I work as a freelance editor, so I was fortunate to be able to escape like this for a time and still be able to keep working. I needed time to heal my heart, and I thought the wild, remote coast would be perfect for me to just find some kind of peace inside. And I believe the energy of the ocean was healing emotionally. So I arrived at the remote beach house, which was really just an old 1800s house that had been modernized somewhat. So it was quite comfortable and warm. This was in the fall, just before the snow came. It felt good to be alone because I lived in Boston and I didn't often have time to visit natural areas like this. The house was fully equipped and so I didn't need to bring much in order to be comfortable except my laptops and iPads. The house was nicely furnished and decorated with a really nice blend of both antique and modern furnishings. A large fireplace with a modern wood-burning stove was inside with a glass front so you could see the flames and it gave the spacious living room a really cozy feel and there were these glass sliding doors too which opened up onto a deck that was about eight feet high from the ground in a rocky outcrop area overlooking the beach and ocean below there was quite a long stretch of sandy beach before reaching the wild waters so I had planned to spend as long as it took for me to edit and write until I felt I was ready to leave and just get back to society. I figured maybe a month, but perhaps even longer, depending on how long the house would be available for. To be honest, I hadn't really made any fixed plan, so I was just paying week to week just to see how it went. There was nothing really creepy about the house itself. But the area outside did feel very remote, and I did feel very much cut off from anything or anyone. I could not see any other houses from that location, and no sign of human presence. Something about this felt a little bit odd and unsettling, but I figured it was just what I needed to get my head straight again and to grieve in peace without interference from relatives or friends and to just listen to the sounds of the seabirds and the wind and waves. I had already brought some groceries and some other basic things were already in the house for my use. So for a week, I was completely alone and spent much of my time just walking on the beach, taking pictures of nature and working at the desk in the living room. That was pretty much my whole day until for whatever reason, something began to change. 
Interestingly enough, this change came around just three days before Halloween. It started off one night as I lay in bed upstairs. I had a very vivid dream that night where my daughter came to me as I sat at the desk working. And she started to beat at the sliding doors with her fists and shouting at me from outside. As a note, the desk was to the right of the glass doors that led to the deck, so I could easily see out during the day. In the dream, after hearing my daughter scream out, Mom, you need to leave. Go home now. Dad and I are waiting for you at home. I just sat there staring at her in the dream as she banged frantically on the glass. For some reason, I was too shocked to get up and open the doors or to even ask her what was going on and why I should go home. The dream was more like a nightmare because of the look on her face. She was obviously scared and warning me, but she was not telling me why. I then woke up with a start and I was sweating and my breathing was heavy. I stared at the clock in the dark room. It was 3 a.m. exactly. The fact that I had seen my daughter made me burst into tears as the pain of missing her so much flooded over me and I cried uncontrollably for what seemed like ages. I eventually fell asleep again. I woke up around 8 a.m. and the dream was clear in my memory still. I told myself it was just a bad dream, made coffee, went for a walk, and then came back for breakfast and then a late start to my morning work. I worked all day at the desk, gazing out of the glass doors from time to time at the wild ocean, cloudy skies and wind that was picking up speed. A storm was brewing. I made a nice cozy fire in the wood burner and decided to work all evening until I felt hungry enough to make food. Three hours later, and the wind had really picked up into a ferocious storm, with rain smashing against the house and the sound of the giant ocean waves pounding against the rocks, audible even inside the house. I became worried and stopped working. I closed my laptop and looked out into the inhospitable darkness. I checked the weather forecast on my phone and I was baffled to see that there was no mention of a storm in my area. In fact, all it showed was that it was a cloudy day with light rain. I figured they must have made a mistake or not updated the info or something, but it seemed odd. Well, I told myself that since there was no actual dangerous weather warning, that I could just relax and that the storm would soon pass. But something in me was just a little too unsettled to continue working and I needed to move around. So I went to the kitchen, which was part of the living room, since the whole area was pretty open and the walls that had once divided the kitchen, living room and dining room had been removed to create an open and spacious home. So as I made food, I could still see the living room and the sliding glass doors that led to the deck and face the ocean. I sat down to eat, trying to ignore the raging storm outside. Afterwards, I figured I'd just relax as best I could for the rest of the night and watch a movie. I sat down on the couch, found a movie I liked and just lay there trying to take my mind off things. But the storm seemed to be getting worse and I was getting ever more concerned. Suddenly, just as I decided to text a friend back home in Boston, to ease my growing concerns about the weather and my feelings of isolation, which were no longer a comfort to me in the face of possible danger from the elements. My phone went dead right after I sent the text. And about five minutes or so later, the power to the whole house went out and I was thrown into darkness inside the house. I've never been comfortable in the darkness, and now I felt nervous, wondering what the heck I was going to do. Fortunately, the wood burner did put out enough light that I could see my way around the room. But in such a violent storm, I hoped the water wouldn't come down the pipe in the chimney and put out the fire. I had enough wood to last me for a couple of weeks, and if need be, 
I could put a pan on the stove top and warm up or make food if the electricity didn't come on for a while. I was just thinking worst case scenario survival mode at this point. I comforted myself with the thought that surely things would be fine in the morning after the storm died down and electricity came back on. I would contact the owner of the house in the morning too, just to touch base. Not wanting to go upstairs to a dark room, I decided to stay the night on the couch in the living room by the wood stove for the night. And soon, even through the noise of the storm, I fell asleep facing the glass doors of the deck. Again, my daughter came to me in the dream and appeared outside on the porch. Only this time, she was not frantically banging on the glass, but instead, she was just looking at me and crying. She said, Mom, you should have left. You're in danger now. Then she disappeared and I woke up to a noise outside, which I figured had probably been lightning. It was dark in the room. The fire had gone out almost completely in the stove. I got up and rubbed my face with my hand, wandering at the dream and feeling a pang of pain at seeing my daughter, and then waking up to the realization again that she was dead. I figured she was warning me about the storm, but what was I to do now except wait it out? I couldn't leave the house now and try to drive anywhere in such heavy rain, and likely the dirt road leading up to the house would be impassable right now. Last thing I wanted was to get stuck out there. Better to hang out in the house until I got the power back, and then either got out of there, or just hope no more storms come and just finish out the vacation. I got up, meaning to go and put a log in the fire to get more light and much-needed warmth in the living room. As I did so, I thought I caught sight of a dim light out in the distance from beyond the deck. I got close to the glass and peered out into the night. It was hard to see much because of the rain and darkness, but sure enough, I could see a sort of distant, dingy light. Now, something about that light was a bit strange. It wasn't like a flashlight or anything, it seemed like something else. I can't explain it really. But anyways, I kept staring out ever more intently through the glass. And then suddenly, there was a peal of thunder and flash of lightning that seemed to last for a couple of seconds. To my horror, as I gazed out past the rain, in that momentary light from the lightning, I caught sight of the unmistakable, striking, dark image of a ship. But it was no modern ship. It was a massive historic ship, perhaps from the 17 to 1800s, looming like a gigantic black skeleton against the dark sky in the brief flash of light. Its sails were more rags than anything, blowing wildly in the fierce winds. Its stern was facing the house, and it was probably about a hundred yards away, which meant it was ashore, because the sea was at least 300 yards away. Also, it was up level with the house, not lower down. This made the scene even more terrifying and confusing to me. How could this be? Was it possible that some historic ship from a naval museum along the coast had somehow drifted away from its moorings and washed out that far? The lightning died again, and I was left straining to look out and try to look for the ship again. I couldn't see anything, however, and although by this time I really did feel scared because of the weirdness of the experience, I waited for the next flash of lightning so I could see it again. Sure enough, it came again after a loud peal of thunder. Excited and scared at the same time, I stared out, squinting my eyes. The flash came, illuminating the same area where the ship had been. But this time, there was no sign of it. All I could see was the horizon, the ocean, the beach, but no sign of any old ship. I pulled back from the glass, perplexed, and freaked out now, for this made no sense. How could a ship that size, seemingly not in water, 
suddenly move out of sight within the space of about four minutes. I had no rational answers. And it was this that was messing with my mind the most. I started shaking with fear. And I actually felt cold now too. The room had grown icy cold. But the wood burner was still going, at least enough that the room should not feel that cold. The worst part, however, came when a sudden, and what I can only describe as an invisible blanket of dread, seemed to envelop the whole house. It came out of nowhere, a very intense feeling of doom, gloom, and unknown danger. At this moment, I knew why my daughter had been warning me to leave. It was more than just the storm. It was something, a shift, a transformation that was not of this world and was now taking place before my eyes. I wondered whether I should just put on my waterproof clothing and boots and get out of the house. But to be honest, the thought of that seemed totally insane and some kind of fear of the unknown prevented me from doing it. I felt some sort of safety even at staying inside the house, you know, as if whatever was out there, it would be a lot worse to be outside than to be inside. Eventually, I summoned up the courage to go again and look out through the glass. I waited for the lightning and there was the ship again, same location as before. It appeared for about a second and then the darkness engulfed it again. At this point, I ran and hid behind the couch. I didn't know what else to do. I was terrified at this stage. I was confused, and the feeling of dread seemed to be growing stronger until it seemed almost unbearable. The anxiety was making my heart race. Something was very, very wrong. But what was going on? I had no answers. No one I could call for help. I was totally alone in there. As I crouched there, wondering what to do, a noise sounded from the roof, it seemed. It was a loud scratching and thumping noise. Then it changed and sounded like some very large person or creature was running around up there in the rain and banging about. I was at my wit's end now and I screamed and cried. Then something made me turn and look at the sliding doors out to the porch. As I did so, a shadow appeared to be out there, standing looking in through the glass. At first impression, I thought it might be a person, and a split second hope came over me and I got up and walked apprehensively to the doors, hoping that it really was just a normal person. I saw it was someone dressed in torn clothes by the looks of it. I couldn't see the face clearly, only the form in shadow. At the time, I didn't even think to ask myself how anyone in their right mind could be out there in a dangerous storm late at night. Then, as I approached the glass, the tall form placed its hands on the glass on either side of its head and peered in at me. The lightning flashed in those seconds and I clearly, for an instant, saw the face and body of whoever or whatever was out there. And as I did so, it felt like I had just received an electric shock. And I fell to the ground because my legs just lost all their strength in that moment. The shock was one of utter fear and terror because what I saw was something that became engraved in my mind forever. The face that looked in on me was totally grey and decomposed. The eyes had no eyelids and they were wide, round and bulging. The lips were gone and the mouth hung open on one side, revealing rotten teeth that were also pointed unlike any teeth I had ever seen before. The hair was mostly gone except a few greasy wet strands that hung over the side of the head on either side. The hands had fingers missing and flesh was torn and grey from decomposition. Its body was covered in ragged clothes, seemingly not from this time period. 
but it was hard to take in enough detail in such a short span of time. The worst thing was how it stared at me. It, or he, for it seemed to be male, was sneering at me. He was grinning in a way that told me this was a seriously evil thing and that it meant me harm. I knew too that the only thing stopping him from reaching me was the glass. He wanted me to let him in. He had some kind of influence over my mind, I could feel it, and had I not been a strong-minded person, I might have easily succumbed to it and opened the doors to the patio to let him in. In sheer terror, I screamed and crawled back behind the couch, and I kept my eyes on him as he stood outside, for I had a fear of losing sight of him in case he should go somewhere else and try to get inside without my knowing. This scared me more than actually looking at him. My breathing came in gasps and sobs now. I could see he was getting angry, and realizing he could not get me to open the doors, he let out an unearthly demonic scream that chilled me to the bones so that I thought I was going to pass out at any moment. I don't know how long I half lay there looking out from behind the couch at this thing in the storm outside. At one point, he started to back off from the doors, then seemed to leap up in the air and I heard him land on the roof again. I summoned all my courage and strength and ran upstairs to make sure no windows had been left open or even just unlocked. I ran wildly into every room to lock all windows, all the while hearing him run around on the roof like a lunatic, intent on terrifying me. Then I thought of the chimney, and my heart raced until I thought it would burst. I ran down and I opened the stove door and threw in three logs and kindling to make the fire as strong as possible, in case he thought he would try coming down the chimney. I sat there by the stove looking at the fireplace, and I started to pray. I'm not religious, but at that moment I prayed and prayed as I heard him on the roof, angry and screaming in demonic rage. Eventually, after two hours of praying and keeping the fire strong in the stove, I lay down beside it, exhausted physically and emotionally, as if I didn't even care anymore about anything. And then I just fell asleep. I was woken up to the sound of pounding on the front door. The room was cold. The fire had gone out. I looked out to the porch and I could see it was morning. There was no more storm, but I was terrified of opening the door after the previous night's horror. I called out, but my voice was hoarse. So I tried again, and this time I heard myself shout, Who is it? A woman's voice answered, and with a relief that was beyond expression, I realized it was my friend, Maggie, who I had texted the night before, expressing my concerns just before the power went out. She called out, Are you okay, Laurie? With a sense of utter desperation and relief, I rushed to the door and opened it. Then I saw her face, and I just passed out. I woke up to find myself on a hospital bed, and Maggie was sitting next to me, smiling. I asked her what had happened. It seemed that for some reason I had lost my memory temporarily. Then she told me her side of the story. Apparently the night before I had sent her the text and told her about the storm and how I was concerned, etc., she had a dream where my daughter appeared to her and told her to come to me because I was in danger. She didn't give the dream too much attention at the time until I sent the text. It was after trying to reach me without success, after my message, that she became concerned and decided to go to Maine and pay me a visit. It was when she told me about the dream that everything came flooding back to me and I just burst into tears, overwhelmed by what had happened and with the clear realization now that my daughter had indeed tried to reach out to me from beyond to try and save my life. 
It was an amazing gift. I then told Maggie what had happened, and fortunately she believed me because she'd had her own share of weird experiences in her life. For some time after, I went to therapy to try to deal with the pain of the loss of my family and with the traumatic experience of the night at the beach house. Since then, I have traveled to India and various remote places in the world seeking answers to my questions about death and, you know, spirituality and what lies beyond this mortal life. I will never forget the horrible face of the creature that night, staring in through the glass sliding doors from the deck, on that awful stormy night in the remote wild main coast. I did later try to find out more about that coastal region, and it seems there had been numerous shipwrecks way back in the 17 to 1800s on a regular basis. And I just figured what I had seen that night was one of those phantom ships and possibly a drowned sailor. But whoever he was, he was now something truly evil and violent. I just feel so grateful to have survived that night and I will never again spend time alone in the remote wild place.